What's up, everybody, and welcome to Catholic Girl on the Radio. I'm Ray Vesley Colley, and this is the show that takes you to the early church fathers' writings and commentary on the Bible and brings it to you in modern day English. Today, we are taking a look at Luke 21, verses 1 through 4. Luke 21 verses 1 through 4 is the widow's tale of two mites, and it says, And he looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury. And he saw also a certain poor widow putting in two mites. So he said, Truly I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all. For all these out of their abundance have put in offering for God, but she out of her poverty put in all the livelihood that she had. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to begin our commentary today with St. Ambrose of Milan, and he says, Jesus stood in the temple and made a statement relevant to this situation. In the next verses, it says, so this is the verse, verse one, he says, and he looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury. And so Jesus at the temple, he was making this statement that's relevant to the situation that he's in. And so the next verse is, it says, Jesus spoke these words in the treasury while teaching in the temple. No one tried to stop him. What we're going to start with is, what is the treasury? That's what St. Ambrose is talking about here. What is the treasury? It's the collecting collection point for the offering of the believers, like a bank for the poor and a place of support for those in need. Jesus sat near this place, and according to Luke, he declared that the widow's offering of two small coins was more valuable than the contributions of the wealthy. God valued love, paired with enthusiasm and selflessness, more than extravagant displays of generosity. This is such a beautiful point that St. Ambrose is making. It is also very true. It's that this woman wasn't trying to show off that she can put in all that money. All this woman was doing was loving and loving selflessly as well. And so he continues and it says, let's examine the comparison Jesus made as he gave his judgment near the treasury. He rightly praised the widow who offered two coins. Her humble poverty was rich in mystery of faith. Ever wonder why? Why did she put in those two coins? What was going on through her mind? I I don't know, this is just like my first time really thinking about the why behind it, but we get this woman and she's poor and she has nothing. But yet again, she's so satisfied with what she does have. Maybe she does have a plate of food for the day. Maybe she knows what hunger looks like. Maybe she doesn't have kids. And she's like, what would I have done if I had kids? And so she gives it to the poor in hopes that those go to the other widows who do have children. I don't know her story, maybe she does. But I'm just thinking as as this woman, if I kind of sit there and I think about her story and what she did and why she did what she did. So many things come to mind, I guess. What kind of love did she have? Why was she so happy with what she had? Well, we're really not happy with all the things that we have and we are a consumer society today. I feel like it's a a good exercise for a little bit to kind of put ourselves in her shoes and see where that thought leads to. So St. Ambrose continues and he says, her humble poverty was rich in mystery of faith. We are, I don't know if we have that. I don't know if we have the humble poverty. And I don't know if it's rich in the mystery of faith. And I don't know if it's poverty as in terms of money, as much as it's poverty of the soul, as much as it's, I'm going to go to God and ask him for the smallest detail. Because 
all the way. Whoa, that I have, all of it actually comes from him. And he could arrange it and he can make it better. And so St. Ambrose continues, says, these two coins resemble the one the good Samaritan in the gospel gave care to care for the injured man left by the robbers. It's pretty cool to think think about because the Good Samaritan was probably a wealthy man. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been able to pay for the hospital bill, for the stay, for someone to take care of the injured man. And this widow is poor. And she put in everything. The rich man and the poor woman. The widow. She's not poor, right? She's rich in faith and and God, but they both contributed the same way because they both contributed love. And St. Ambrose continues and says symbolically, the widow represents the church, which uses her gifts to heal the wounds of the poor and feed those in need. I feel this for us today, it's on two levels. One, it is the ministry work that we work in the church for the poor and to feed those in need but also it's a spiritual feeding. And it's sometimes our churches, it doesn't have a lot of manpower. There isn't a lot of people out there preaching as compared to the other people who are not, right? Sharing the word of God and truly helping heal the souls through the um, the word of God, helping heal the wounds that exist in in our world today, maybe our suffering isn't necessarily poverty as in lack of money or lack of resources, but maybe our suffering today is is different. But it still sounds, right? It still says it's the same thing. It still represents the church who puts in all she has. And God sees that and God blesses that and God multiplies it. There are certain times where the church throws events that are not extravagant, but they are like the widow's, um, the widow's coins, simple and humble, yet so profound and so rich in, in glory. And if we sit there in mystery, right? If we sit there and we meditate on that as Jesus did, we'll find the beauty of it. Because the beauty of it is in the human connection and the community that is made. So we continue on, but this time the commentary is from St. Bede. And he goes on to explain a little bit more about the wording and what it means. And so he says, the Greek term for treasury comes from the word meaning to keep and riches from Persian roots. So treasury is a place where the money is stored. There was a chest with an opening at the top near the place of the altar, to the right of those entering the temple. The priests put all the donations in the temple, for the temple in that chest. Just as Jesus drove out those trading in the temple, he also noticed the people offering gifts, praising the good and criticizing the unworthy. And this is why he said, and he also saw a poor woman putting in two small coins. So he's looking at these and he's looking at just kind of observing and watching what's going on and the kind of people that are putting in the money and what they're seeing after and how they're being critical of everybody else and their behavior and their walk and the way they look at the poor and the way they treat each other without love. And as he's sitting there, he sees this woman who Probably by a lot of people, she's criticized. And she's doing good. She comes in humbly, without notice, without seeking anything, without looking for anything, and puts in her two coins. That's us, or I hope that that's us too. That we work in the same way. That we're not necessarily sounding the trumpets before us. There are moments where we're called to stand up and speak. There are moments where we're called to be before others and really lead by example, by serving others. That's the example we need to to put in. But um, 
to come, come to the Mass, come to altar, and put in our offering quietly, without anybody knowing, without anybody saying. And so St. B continues, and he said, God accepts anything we give him with an honest heart. He doesn't measure the, the gift amount by evaluating. He doesn't measure the gift's amount, but evaluates what it costs to give it. As the verse continues, for all gave from their surplus, but she gave all she had. What a beautiful and profound thing to say. And I, I don't know if I've ever really worded it this way or thought about it this way, but he doesn't measure the gift's amount, but evaluates what it costs to give it. He looks at your heart and he thinks, what did this cost this person? Did it cost them a lot of love? Did it cost them a lot of um, sacrifice to do this? Or was it something that they just had laying around? And I don't know, but there's something beautiful about giving all that we have to God. And again, we're not necessarily talking about the possession. It's not the size of the coin. It's not the amount of the coins that matter. It's the amount of love that she gave out of, you know. It wasn't because she owes great amounts, obviously. It was because it was so little, so insignificant in the sight of others. But to God, it meant so much because she gave it from the bottom of her heart. And she didn't give it because she had to. She gave it because she wanted to. And so St. B continues and he says symbolically, the rich represent the Jews who are proud of their sticks, strict adherence to the law. The poor widow represents the church, which is called poor because it's given up pride and sin. Sin is seen as worldly riches. Wow, that's so beautiful. I'm going to read this one again. The poor widow represents the church, which is called poor because she gave up pride and sin seen as worldly riches. Is that what we're rich in? Are we rich in pride and sin? I know at some point in my life I am. And I pray that God heals that and changes my heart enough for me not to be prideful and not be, to be sinful, to give that up. Because if that's the commodity of the world, is measuring it or collecting, then I want none of it. And I don't think you do either. But to say we're rich not in money, but in pride and sin, because there are so many people that have a lot of money. But that's not how, how they're seen as rich. Because their hearts is full of love and they do so much goodness in the world. And so St. B continues and he says, the church is also a widow because her husband, Christ, died for her. Wow, that's beautiful. She gave two small coins to the treasury, which represents her offering of love towards God and others. That is faith and prayers. You, my friend, are an extension of that faith and prayer. You're an extension of that church and your behaviors and your actions. It has to be out of faith and prayer. These gifts are far greater than the self-righteous deeds of the Jews. While they rely on their wealth of good deeds, the church gives everything she has, recognizing that all life comes from God. Now we're going to take a look at commentary from St. Cyprian of Carthage, and he says, you who are rich cannot perform good works in the church because your eyes are blinded by darkness, unable to see the need of the poor. Do you, the wealthy, truly celebrate the Lord's feast? You don't even consider your offering. You come to the Lord's table without bringing a sacrificial gift, and yet you take part in the sacrifice offered by the poor. Look at the gospel example of the widow who, despite her poverty and hardships, remembered the heavenly commandments and performed a good deed. She gave two small coins, 
her only possession, into the treasury. Good reminders, right? We who possess a lot of things in this world. But also, if I want to go back to St. Bede and kind of put these two together, we who possess so much pride and so much sin, come to the altar of the Lord, especially on Christmas and on, on, and on Easter, and we offer the sacrifice that's made by those who are faithful and prayerful. And I can say that the, I'm sure that the, those who are prayerful and faithful, the church, are happy to offer the sacrifice for both, are happy to give to both. But so many of us come to this church and come to the celebration, to the Lord's table, and instead of making an offering of true sacrifice of love, a true offering of peace, we rather bring our sin and our um, uh, pride with us to church and we stand there judging other. And in the middle of divine liturgy or mass, we go and receive communion. Not very great, <laughs> not very great, but it is. Ha it happens. And so let's Hope to change our hearts so that our hearts are open to God and we're offering what the poor woman is offering, a true sacrifice of love and prayer, prayer for our enemies, prayer for those around us, acts of faith, and so forth. And so he continues and he says, this is St. Cyprian, and he says, he was a blessed and remark she was a blessed and remarkable woman. Even before the final judgment, was praised by the voice of the judge. Gosh, I hope I hope we're like that too. I hope even before we go and see God, he praises us with the voice of the judge. Even if we don't hear it, um, he praises us for the love that we have. And he continues, he says, let the rich be ashamed of the lack of generosity. A poor widow was found to have an offering, while those who should give much give nothing. Even though offerings are meant for orphans and widow, this widow gave what she might have needed herself. What a beautiful thing. That was the intention of this box was to give to the needy, was to give to the poor. And you guys, I feel like this is true of other ministries as well. Sometimes it's human services or social service ministries where the person who is making the offering is also in need of love. They're also in need of these services. But out of their love, they said, okay, well, my, my heart is full of God's love. It's full of his companionship. Let me go out and offer companionship to others. Even though that person may need that service themselves, which is really beautiful. And so that's the generosity that we're talking about. And those, let's say, those who do have companionship, those who do have someone to love, those who do have a family, aren't going out and being with those who don't. Tending to the hearts of those who are lonely. So we're rich in having families, we're rich in having uh, people surround us that love us. That is also something that we, we should be grateful for, but we should be ashamed if we're not giving that back as well. Because that is the offering that maybe is needed right now. It may not be monetary, it may be social, and it may be psychological, and it may be love that is needed to be given. And uh, so he continues and he says, this teaches us what punishment awaits the selfish rich and shows that even the poor should do good. We should understand that such offerings are made to God and those who perform such deeds will be rewarded by him. Jesus calls these acts gifts of God, showing us that the widow gave two coins to the treasury as a gift to God, teaching us that helping the poor is like lending our next commentary is from St. Cyril of Alexandria, and he says, This passage might upset some wealthy people, so I'll address them directly. You, O rich person, 
take pride in the abundance of your possessions. But when you give, you don't offer according to your means. Instead, you give so little from the surplus that you won't that you won't even notice it's gone. In contrast, the woman in the story gave two small coins, which were all she had. With empty hands and yet with great generosity from her little, she gave she left that treasure. Did she not rightly earn the crown of victory? Wasn't she declared superior by the holy judgment? Her willingness to give surpassed your abundance. And he goes on, he continues very briefly, and he says, the widow gave two small coins, which she earned through her own hard work, or perhaps begged for daily. Instead of keeping them for herself, she offered them to God, showing that her poverty bore fruit. Any situation that we're in, when we offer it to God and we allow him to use it, it uh, bears fruit. And we continue, and he says, this is why she surpassed the others earning a crown from God's just judgment. Jesus said, This poor widow, widow has given more, acknowledging the depth of her sacrifice. We continue on with our commentary. This is from Leo of Rome, and he says, Although some people's bitterness remains unchanged even in the face of kindness, acts of mercy are never wasted, and kindness never loses its value, even when offered to the ungrateful. Beloved, let no one avoid doing good works. No one should excuse themselves by claiming that poverty is too great to help others. What is offered out of little is still great. For God's divine justice, it's not the amount of the gift that matters, but the steadfastness of the giver's heart. None of us are excluded. None of us are excused by saying, well, I don't have this. The little that we have, if we give it, whether it's money or time or love or anything, it makes a difference. And he continues and he says, in the gospel, the widow gave two small coins to the treasury, and this was greater than the gift of all the rich. No act of mercy is worthless to God. You smiling to someone as you're walking on the street is an act of mercy. You helping out at the church, maybe cleaning the church, is an act of mercy. You doing things outside for another ministry is an act of mercy, even if it's just once. While people are giving different levels of resources, God doesn't ask for varying levels of affection or love in return. It's beautiful. And this last commentary that we have is by uh, Theophilus of Antioch. And he says, The widow symbolically represents any soul that has lost its first husband, the ancient law, and is not yet worthy of union with the word of God. Such a soul offers faith and a good conscience to God instead of a dowry. This offering is considered greater than those from people who are rich in eloquence and possess moral virtues of the Gentiles. Very interesting way of looking at things. Interesting in a good way. Like, I never thought of it in this way. Never occurred to my mind, but this is pretty good. Let's see where he goes. He says, alternatively, the widow may signify a soul having abandoned its reliance on the old covenant, seeks God with humility bringing faith and purity of heart as a gift. The soul offering surpasses the contribution of those who boast of external righteousness and worldly values. So I'm, I'm liking what he's saying. It's a little bit convoluted, and, but the offering that is, um, that is put or this representation of this widow signifying this abandonment of the old covenant well the majority of us aren't relying on the old covenant in this day but if we want to compare it it'd be society's rules or society's judgment or what society thinks of um of how we are supposed to behave whether it's in promiscuity or in 
seeking just money or the way we interact with each other, the way we hurt each other constantly, it's abandoning all of that and coming to God and saying when faith and humility, humility, right? Humility is so important. Humility and faith and saying to God, look, I have failed you time and time again. Help me see, help me change, chisel out my soul. And this is all that I have. I come to you with the little that I have and the little that I have is not good. It's not great. It's not glorious. It's just my brokenness. Do with it as you please. And the world leaves us broken and wounded and hurt. Trying to live to a standard that doesn't exist and shouldn't exist because it's not wholesome. And so our calling is to come to God as this widow did. Offer everything that she has. Offer everything, all of our sin, all of our troubles, all of our doubts to God and have him change that. All right, my friends, that brings us to the end of our show for today. Thank you guys for listening. If you'd like to connect with me, you can find me at The Word with Rita, and I will be with you in the next one. Bye for now.